Hey everyone, it's Cheryl from Teaching Two and Three Year Olds. Well, we are now entering December, and as I said in my last video, we have a lot of things planned, but I still keep it very, very simple because I know how amped up the kids are going to be during this season. So if you didn't get a chance to watch my last video where I give you different ideas on what to do during December, I'll drop a link in the description. Make sure to check it out. I also have a new blog post all about different circle time activities that you can do in December. I'll drop that link into the description as well. So we've all had Thanksgiving. Happy belated Thanksgiving to all of my friends in the United States. I had a week off, our whole preschool did. So now I'm coming back refreshed. We've taken all fall things out of the classroom. Well, I hope so. We always find some things that are tucked underneath shelves and such, but everything visible fall is gone and we're moving into our December themes. Starting off with gingerbread. So let me take you around the room and show you how we have our classroom set up for our gingerbread theme. So in our block area, we have some really cute little plush gingerbread people that um, one of my co-teachers, her mom got it. I think she found them like a Goodwill or something a lot, quite a few years ago. And so our, especially our younger children love them because they're soft and they fit nicely in their hands. So we just put them over here on our train table and we have different places where their gingerbread people can hide. Um, our children get really into this after we read several of the gingerbread man books. So they can reenact the story here at the block area. On our writing table, we have some small gingerbread people that I, I created this free printable. We used it last year in a gingerbread marble painting activity. So I'll drop a link to this in the description, um, but I love using these printables for different things. And in this case, we're gonna have them at our writing table with the, these cute little gingerbread mailboxes that I found at our local um, grocery store. And they can then color them and put them into the mailbox or do whatever they want to with them. In our dramatic play area, we are pretending to be making gingerbread cookies. Again, this will be way more meaningful for the children after we read the story, but I do have a couple of the books that are up on the shelf if they wanna to refer to those. And then I have a free printable that has um, different, um, there's little gingerbread people and I just laminated them and I cut them out so they can use this really cute little gingerbread spatula that I found at a thrift store a few years back. And I also have this little order form so if they want to pretend that they are buying gingerbread cookies, it's um, they can circle how many they want and this is a great way to add some counting to your dramatic play area as well. And then at the light table, the children are going to be making a gingerbread house. And this is a printable that I've created. Link is in the description. And then they just move the pieces around so that they can make the gingerbread house look any way that they want to. At the Isa, we will be painting gingerbread people. And we have, I have this printable. This is very similar. It's the same um, design as the smaller ones that are, that are at the writing table, but this one is one larger one on a sheet of paper. So they're going to be painting these and I'm going to have them use cotton swabs instead of paint brushes because every so often, I like to use them because they're, they're more, um, they really work on the fine motor skills a little bit more and the children have to be a little bit more deliberate with their movements when they're using them. In our sensory bin, we have my very favorite gingerbread paper mache boxes. I think this is our third year using these and they have really held up well. I'm really impressed. We and then have our little bendable gingerbread men that I got off Amazon and I'll put a link to all of these in the description. And then I have our little bug tongs so they can scoop the pieces into either the gingerbread boxes or uh, gingerbread man boxes, or they can scoop them into that big gingerbread house. One of our table activities this week is going to be doing a lacing um, activity. It's a gingerbread house and gingerbread cookies. And this I got from Scholastic. I don't know if it's still available. You could pop over to scholastic.com and take a look. 
I got it a couple of years ago, but this is just a fun, um, fine motor activity with the gingerbread theme. And I have two other table activities that are printables that I've created. One is matching the ornaments. So I made two copies, kept one intact, and then I have the separated the other. So they're cards, and then they just have to match the number so they count. And so it's good for counting skills and also for number uh, counting skills and number recognition. And then I also have this gingerbread, um, it's a picture puzzle. This is a very simple one, so this is really good for younger children because they look at the numbers and they put them in numerical order to make the picture. But if they can't yet recognize in the numbers, they can just look at the picture that way and then put them together. One of our art activities this week is making our personalized ornament. Now every year I like to make an ornament that includes the child's photo and then it can be a little keepsake gift that they give to their parents. And this is one that um, they're going to paint it. They're probably going to be painting them with some watercolors, maybe dropping them using droppers. I haven't quite decided yet on how. And then they are gonna glue the little pieces onto it and then there's an opening so their picture goes inside. And these we purchased from Discount School Supply. And then I also, last year we did one very similar to it. And I'll drop a link in the description so you can see how we did, did that one. But again, every year I like to do something as a keepsake with a photo in it. It makes a nice gift and the parents love it. Another activity that they're going to be doing is painting these paper ornaments. And this is a printable that I created. Again, link is in the description but I make one for each child that has the first letter of their name. And so then they're gonna paint them, and then, or last year we did, we did do a dots on them, so we might do that as well. And then I cut them out, and these are little tags that I attach to the gift that they give to their parents. So they're just little paper ornaments, they can hang them on the tree if they would like to. And one of our favorite activities is ice painting. And for those of you who have been following me for a while, you recall all the different shapes that we have used to do ice painting. And this week we are going to be using a gingerbread man tray. And unfortunately I left that at home because I knew I was gonna be filling it with water at home and, and putting them in my freezer. And I forgot to bring it for this video. So I'm sharing another possibility and that is it's a little um, gingerbread house. So we just, we fill these, um, these are like cake molds and cake pans. And I usually get them, you can get them off Amazon. I also like to look at TJ Maxx and Marshalls and those types of places because I can usually find them at a really pretty good, good cost there. So um, I usually will look for different holiday shapes and then we just simply, like I said, we, we fill them with water, we put them in the freezer, I make enough so that we have one for each child, usually depending if it's gonna be a whole group activity or I'll just have four if it's gonna be something that's, that we're doing during center time and children are gonna be coming up um, with just, just a few children at a time doing it. But I, we love these activities because, especially during this hectic time, this is a real easy, simple, soothing activity where there's no outcome at all, they just, that's desired, all it is is they do what they want with it, and then when they're finished, we just drop it into the sink, rinse them off, let it melt, and that's it. Super simple and fun. And then over at the Play-Doh table, I created these gingerbread mats, and it's, they're just very simple. I just created one because what I do is I make enough copies of them so that I have enough for the entire table. So in this case we have three, but if my table um, could have four children, I'd, I'd make four copies. If my table would fit five, I'd have five copies, etc. cetera. They're, they're meant to be little placemats and I laminate them. And then the children can roll the Play-Doh and then press it on top of the gingerbread person on the mat and then I have those some more of those little bendable gingerbread figures that are in the sensory bin so they can press those into the play-doh I also have some big shape buttons that oh my gosh I love these buttons you've already seen me use them so many times but because of our younger children with choking issues I didn't want to use small buttons so these nice big buttons are safe for them 
I'll drop a link to these buttons in the description because it's a huge bag and you will use them for so many different activities. And then of course I also have some gingerbread cookie cutters. And then in our science and exploration area, we are looking at pine branches and we're thinking about Christmas trees and there's pine cones. And for the older children, they can do this pattern block mat. And this is from prekinders.com, my friend Karen. And I will drop a link to this in the description. And for our younger children, they can try, they can trace a cookie cutter tree if they want, or they can, I also have some tree shaped paper if they just want to use some crayons and markers and decorate those. And then we love reading all different varieties of the gingerbread girl, gingerbread man, gingerbread boy, gingerbread cowboy. I mean, there's so many different ones. Um, these are just a few that we will be reading, but I know there'll be some others as well. Um, we also like to um, read Maisie Makes Gingerbread. It's a nice, simple book that we read before we make our gingerbread house. So that's how we have our classroom set up for the gingerbread theme. This is our first theme of December and then we'll do a week of this theme and then we will add more Christmas. We will be doing jingle bells and stars and candy canes. So we'll be adding more of those in the next two weeks after we have our gingerbread theme. And if you do not do Christmas during the month of December, I do have some winter preschool themes that I helped create along with some other talented teachers and homeschoolers. I'll drop a link to this, these lesson plans in the description. Um, and these can be done, like I said, they can be done in December if you don't use Christmas, if you don't do Christmas in your classroom. And you can also use these, of course, in January. So if you're planning ahead to January, you can make, you might want to look at these lesson plans as well. Again, those are my winter preschool lesson plans. Linked is in the description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you all have a good December. And if you like what you're watching, make sure to subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon so you can be notified every time I publish a new video. Thanks for watching.